Okay. Uh, mechanical vibrations are a very important aspect of engineering design, and as you know, mechanical vibrations lead to higher stresses because dynamic forces induce high forces that uh, can cause fatigue, and fatigue damage is one of the main reasons we have many failures. So vibrations uh, is a study that goes through your undergraduate education, and some of you will continue to study vibrations of uh, more complex systems. In this experiment, we are going to look at the vibrations induced in a rotating shaft. And rotating shafts, uh, they are not perfect, so they have eccentricities in their distribution of mass. And that's the reason why they kind of sometimes wobble and uh, wear around, and we are trying to mimic that. So the experiment is, uh, as you can see here, we have um, a, uh, a shaft, this, uh, uh, th this particular shaft right here. Uh, and uh, on that shaft, we are introducing uh, one, uh, a, a one kilogram, approximately 1.03 kilogram mass uh, that is attached to the shaft. You can adjust the position by unlocking the lock on the side and moving it around so you can move this around. Right now, it is uh, uh, situated at the center of the shaft. This mass has a small degree of eccentricity that you will determine, determine from the measurements. And as it rotates, there's going to be uh, a force, a centripetal force that is trying to kind of move it away from the center of the shaft. And the centripetal force, if, the, if this was not connected to the shaft, then it will just fly away. But because connected to the shaft, then the shaft will pull it back. So the interplay between the centripetal force that it wants to fly away and uh, the pullback from the shaft give you the vibration. And the vibration uh, manifests itself in uh, the what uh, is known as the critical speed. Uh, so at certain particular uh, speed, uh, there's going to be violent vibrations and maximum uh, motion of that uh, mass. So to do the measurements for the critical speed, we have here a, um, a uh, motor, as a Bosch 24-volt uh, uh, DC motor with a uh, control, speed control that is RC441 speed control. And uh, you just plug it in here. And you have to be careful now with this experiment. It's very important that you follow safety instructions. We have a safety hood on top here. And when, it, when, the sh when it's rotating, uh, you have to uh, be able to put the safety hood on top. Uh, but anyway, you can control the speed with the speed controller. I'm going to just do it very slowly here just to show you. So now the shaft is rotating with the uh, mass attached to it. and. Um, uh, we can adjust the uh, 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 number of revolutions per minute. Uh, the controller allows us to adjust the revolutions per minute from uh, 0 to 3,000 RPM. So I'm going to turn it off right now and tell you about the other parts of the equipment. So attached to this, we have to measure the displacement. So we have to measure the motion of, the, of that mass up and down. And the motion is measured by a fiber optic uh, sensor uh, uh, that is uh, called RC90. So this RC90 fiber optic sensor changed the, uh, sends a beam of light to bounce off the, uh, the top of this mass and then go back and, and it's calibrated so the displacement is converted to uh, a, uh, a voltage. And that voltage is uh, uh, go out as a signal, a delta V, you can see here, positive and negative. So this delta V needs to be measured. And the delta V, as you can see, that's going to be very, very fast. So the delta V will be a function of time. And therefore, we need to have a measurement device that can allow us to measure this delta V. A normal voltometer is not going to work. So what we're going to do is we will have to use an oscilloscope. Uh, before we use the oscilloscope, we uh, uh, have a lot of noise on the vibration itself, so the signal is not going to be very clean. So we have uh, here a filter, and this is a filter that takes the input. So this will be the input, as you can see the input here on channel 1, and the output is from uh, channel 1. So this is a multi-input uh, and, and dual output uh, uh, filter. And this is a filter circuit. looks big, but it is a filter circuit. 
and you can control the cutoff frequency below which you eliminate the noise uh, and you can also give it uh, you can increase the gain or decrease the gain uh, for the input and the gain for the output also can be controlled so for the time being we're gonna just have a cutoff frequency of 10 Hertz we're using channel number one and uh, the output is channel number one as well so we can turn on the power for the filter or turn it off very simply here the filter is model 3382 uh, and uh, it's a Butterworth uh, Bessel type uh, filter uh, the circuit is in your circuit design uh, course <coughs> but uh, you can look also on the web if you want to get more information on this Butterworth uh, type uh, filter. Now the output signal is connected to an Agilent uh, 54621A uh, uh, oscilloscope. It's a very good oscilloscope and it's uh, up to a 60 megahertz so it can measure frequencies up to 60 megahertz. Uh, the oscilloscope is um, uh, uh, two channel oscilloscope so you can connect two signals. Here we have one signal one and signal two. So we're gonna just use channel one that here for the display. So I'm gonna just uh, zoom in <coughs> to show you features of the uh, Agilent oscilloscope because most of your work is going to be with that one. First you turn it on here and uh, you turn it on then it takes a little time uh, to uh, come online. You get some instructions uh, on the screen uh, if you just push any button, the instructions will disappear and you're ready to go. Uh, the way is controlled. You have channel one here. So we are in channel one already. If it is on, this is on, this is off. So it's channel one. We're ready to go. And uh, you have various modes to do th stuff. So I'm going to uh, talk about the modes up here. Uh, but before we go to the modes, we have uh, ability to control the datum level of the voltage. So the signal this is zero so you can control the zero is here and uh, then the sampling or the frequency here or the uh, actually the the time interval uh, that you can observe on the screen is is controlled by here so um, um, sorry this one here is actually the maximum amplitude of the voltage so if you look here it will be this is two volt you can bring it five volt 10 volt so as you bring it to the maximum limit this is the control limit of of the signal is 10 volts and becomes very sharp uh, if you go down you can 5 volt uh, 2 1 volt then you can see still that some of the noise comes in as you increase the sensitivity of that uh, amplitude um, now for different measurements uh, we have a button here called cursor uh, cursors so if you push it you get a menu on the bottom and the menu on the bottom you can select the source so the source one as we have here and uh, the mode is a normal mode so it has binary and hex uh, hexadecimal but we're gonna go normal so we're okay normal and then you can select either the X or the Y uh, cursors so if we select the X cursors uh, we can uh, we have displays of two cursors x1 and x2 so for x1 for example here then we can use this knob this is a very important knob this one will once you do the selection then this one will do the operation so we can now move the knob it gives us x1 you will see x1 is is changing in milliseconds and delta x which is the distance between x1 and x2 in milliseconds uh, is also displayed if we press X2, we can control where X2 is. This is X2, you have a second cursor coming in. Um, and then if we press this, this will give us X1 and X2 can move at the same time. You can see that they sync right here. So that's for the cursors. You could do the same thing for Y. Uh, same the same controller will control either Y1 or Y2 or both of them. So both of them will move to in sync. So we did that now for the uh, uh, cursors. Uh, another important uh, aspect of this is the acquire mode. So if you push the acquire mode on the waveform, this acquire mode has normal operation, which is here. 
but what's important is the averaging. The averaging is when you acquire the data, then there's a running average routine in here that smooths the data. So the running average here is, uh, uh, is contained in this uh, setup. So if you push this, this will be, uh, the running average is 16, but you can control it to 64, 10, 4, and so on. For example, if you, if you have this at 2, then you're actually skipping every second point and making an average. Uh, normally, uh, to get the, the more points you sample, the smoother the signal is going to be. But of course, you know from the data acquisition experiment that we teach over there that if you increase the running average points too, fa too much, then you can actually uh, get rid of the signal altogether. So it, uh, we recommend that this number will be somewhere between 8 and 16. So we're going to take it as 8 here, or 16, let's say. And then we're ready to uh, do some measurements. So right now, um, uh, we're going to see how we do the measurements. Um, on that signal. So we go back to uh, cursors. The first uh, uh, type of experiment we will do is a time domain experiment. And uh, uh, we'll get it right here. Let's see if we do the average even a little bit slow smaller. And uh, we also adjust here. have to do yeah so the first uh, uh, set of experiment that we'll do is uh, you're going to find the free response of the uh, of this uh, rotating shaft and to do the free response we're going to use our hand pull the um, uh, shaft up and then let go and that will induce a vibration a free vibration that will be damped and the damping of this vibration, we will try to measure it on the oscilloscope. So um, we're going to try to do that in, uh, in the oscilloscope. In addition to this, on the oscilloscope, you have a run control. If you push this button here, it's a run stop. Whatever oscillation you have on the screen, it will stop. And then you can do your measurement. So it just kind of stores. Uh, the measurement and uh, you can stop it at any point in time. Uh, so let's go back here to um, the um, cursors. Let me see. The scale. We just I'm going to adjust the scale. Let me go out of scale first. Out of scale. Going to increase the sensitivity. Yeah, maybe you stop. 